Hello, today's lesson is about triangular prisms, right? So we've already learned about how to find the surface area of a rectangular prism, and today we're looking at triangular prisms. And remember this polyhedron, right, this three-dimensional figure is named for the shape of its base. And so you see a triangle at the top, and there's another triangle, right, that's on the bottom that you can't see. Um, but because it has triangular bases, that's why it's called a triangular prism, because it's named for its base. So this could be the, you know, top, this could be the bottom, but it has two parallel, right? If I do a little line like this, I'm trying to show that the bottom and the top are the two triangles that are parallel, and they're flat. So in other words, it's one of those, right, where if you have a flat shape, right, I can put my little cup of coffee, um, on top and it won't spill. So because it has a flat bottom and a flat top, it's not a pyramid, right? It's not pointy. So I've got my two triangle bases labeled. It doesn't really matter what you call these other sides, but you can think of them the way this picture is, right? So remember that the word for sides in geometry is lateral. So this is a lateral face. This is a lateral face. So these are all faces, and we could call these the lateral faces, which means they are the sides. So I'm just going to label them with side face, because in this picture, I see three rectangles. Well, I can see the left, I can see the right, and then there's one behind that you can't see. So remember that when you're finding the surface area of a triangular prism, right, we have five faces to calculate the areas of. Now, the two triangle bases are always going to be the same, right? The side faces don't always have to have the same dimensions. Okay, so let's look at the key idea. This is in your textbook, and it's on page 363. Okay, so this, right, super important to remember that the way you find the area of a triangle is base times height and you take half of it because a triangle is half of a rectangle or parallelogram. I usually use B times H divided by two, but dividing by two and multiplying by one half is the same thing, but this is usually what I choose to think of when I'm finding the area of a triangle. And then you're gonna notice here's a picture of the net. And so I like that this is color coded and they're pointing out that the green triangles are the bases. Now this time, this shape is not sitting on the triangle, right? It's sitting on the bottom, which is a rectangle. And then you can call this, this is, if it was sitting on the triangle base, this would be a lateral, right? A lateral face. But for right now, we could call it a bottom. It doesn't really matter. What's important is that you know that there are a total, right? So now I'm going to the notes where you're going to be writing this down. A triangular prism has a total of five faces. There are two triangle shaped faces, which are called faces. There are three rectangle shaped faces. If a triangular prism is sitting on a rectangle, you can call that face the bottom, but it is not a base, right? Because for the purposes of labeling any shape a prism, it has to have two parallel bases. And this bottom piece that you can't really see because it's hidden doesn't have a parallel, right? There is no side that is opposite the, um, the base because it has, it, because of the triangle, it has sides, and they're not even perpendicular, right? If you look at the, the angle of where the orange side and the blue side where they meet the bottom, it, it's not perpendicular, but it is sort of, you know, they're like the slanted sides of a triangle. Okay, so after you've written down all of those notes, um, you can continue, and let's go ahead and look at an example. Okay, so here's an example that's also in your textbook, and we're gonna find the surface area of the triangular prism. 
So the way I have it broken up down here is, well, we, we're going to find the area of the bottom because when I look at the shape, it's not sitting on the triangle. So I really can call this, I'm going to outline in red, and, it, and it's good to outline the shapes that you see in different colors so that you can see, okay, so there's, I know it's sometimes hard to see 3D, but there's a picture of the rectangular bottom. And once I drew that picture, now I can see the dimensions of the bottom, right? It's 12 across, right? So this is the length and there's the width. So now I can see that the bottom rectangle is 12 by eight, right? So I've got a picture here of the bottom rectangle piece. Okay, and then what I picture is, I'm gonna go ahead and erase what I wrote there because then I'm gonna picture the triangular prism unfolding. And what I'm going to do on this side is I'm going to trace, oops, I'm tracing the edges of this shape, right? This is the side face. And once I highlight the, the um, edges of this rectangle, it makes it easier to see the dimension. So now I can see that this rectangle is eight by five. So I'm going to drag this face over. Right, so now there's my eight by five side, so I'm unfolding. And then I'm gonna go ahead and unfold the blue side, right? It's gonna flop out to the left. And again, it might make it easier to see the dimension of the side if you take a pencil or marker, if you can, right? If you have a printed copy, you can't do this on your textbook. But I'm gonna outline the rectangle that I see on the left side. So this one's a little bit harder to see, but you can see that it's really long, right? And it's 13 centimeters long. And then what I notice is that even though it's not listed, right? This side is what I'm looking for. So I'm looking, here's my length. I'm looking for this width. And this width is the same as this width. So, which also is the same as this side. So sometimes I'll just go ahead and add another note to myself so that I can see that this top, they're calling it the top lateral face, this top is 13 by 8. And then I'm going to go ahead and move that over here. So now I've got the bottom, it kind of looks like the bottom, the right side, and the top side. Now the way this prism is sitting, the two um, triangle bases, right, one's facing me, so I could call that the front, and the other one is is in the back so i could think of that as being in the back so i also i'm going to go ahead and erase and then i'm going to use green and now i'm trying to find the dimensions of the triangle and then remember that a triangle is base times height divided by two now remember uh way back when we learned about finding the area of a triangle you only need the base and the height and remember those are the two numbers so i would call this the base and I would call this the height. They have to be the two numbers that make a right angle. So since this is five centimeters, I know this is five centimeters. Okay, so remember this is 13 because we already did the, the left side, the left lateral face. I don't use the slant height to find the area of a triangle. Remember, so don't be fooled by that third measurement. If you're not standing straight up against the wall, you can't measure yourself. You measure yourself from the top of your head down to the bottom and it's, you're perpendicular to the ground. So just remember that with a triangle. I won't use the 13 to find that area of the triangle because that is the slant height. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and this shape needs to go up here. So I'm unfolding the back, right? So I put that there. And then I need to bring another one over here, but you can see that what I need to do is I need to turn it around. Oops, I need to actually flip it the other way. So I flipped it, but you can see that because I, it made a reflection, oops, the writing is also backwards. Okay. Okay, so it's fun to see some backwards writing there. All right, so hey, it kind of looks like a rocket ship. Okay, so now I have my picture of my net, right? The net is when I take a 3D shape and I turn it into a flat two-dimensional um, 
figure. So now all I have to do is find the area of all the pieces, right? So I'm going to start with the bottom, 12 centimeters times 8 centimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, put these in black, but I have the colors that match. Okay, so 12 times 8 is 96. So I have 96 centimeters squared. And the area of the two triangular bases, right? So this is a little tricky. So remember that um, <clears throat> the triangle bases the area of a triangle is 12 times 5 divided by 2. And 12 times 5 is 60 divided by 2 is 30. So I only have to find the area once because the other triangle in a triangular prism is the exact same size. So now I have also 30 centimeters. And then I'm going to multiply the 13 times 8 for the left side to get 104 centimeters and the right side is 5 times 8 which is 40 centimeters squared. So now that I have all of my five faces, right, I have the area of each, the total, this sign means therefore the total surface area, remember we usually use FA equals 300 centimeters squared. Okay, so that's it. You're finding the area of two triangles and three rectangles. But this part here of finding the dimensions of the all of the five pieces is usually the trickiest. All right, so now we are on an OYO, right? So I want you to pause the video, try to draw the net, and then you're going to put the area of each of the five faces in the graphic organizer below. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and draw to show you what I would do first. I'm going to start with the bottom. So I'm going to keep the same colors I did in the example. And so I'm going to do the bottom in red. And I'm going to do the triangle bases. Oops, that would be green. In green. And then the sides, I'm going to do one side will be blue and the other side will be orange. So when I fill in the numbers, I'm just going to keep the color coding. And you might want to use color coding too to help you organize your information. All right, so I like to start with the bottom. That's what I do for rectangular prisms. That's what I do for triangular prisms. Notice it's sitting on this bottom. And when I draw around the edges of the bottom, you can now see that the dimensions are four by four. So I'm going to put this kind of in the middle. It doesn't have to be a perfect square, but it's supposed to be, right? So then I'm just going to abbreviate BOT. That stands for the bottom. Okay, so it's four by four. Now that I have that, I can go ahead and write in 16 yards squared. Okay, and now I'm going to trace the, um, I'm going to erase this because it kind of gets messy if you use more than one color on, um, on one drawing. Uh, if you're using a highlighter, then it's easier to see. Okay, so now I'm going to do the bases, right? So there's my triangle base, and then the other one, right, is identical. So I don't always draw the back one. I usually just focus on the front. Now notice this five is the slant height. Remember that I'm looking for the two sides that make the right angle. So that means this is my base and this is my height. So remember for a triangle, um, well, I'll do the area next. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, this triangle would open up like this. Oh, did I do that right? Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so there's that and that. Okay, so I noticed that I forgot to put my dimensions on my box. So that one's four. And then this side is four. This side is four. And so when this triangle flops out, it's the four stays there, right? There's the four. It's three that um, the, the dimensions of the height, right? It's the height that falls outward. So that, that side right there is three. So that becomes, that is the height of my triangle. And then I'm going to draw the, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and um, finish the drawing and then I'll put in all the areas. So I'm going to erase this. And now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the side that I'm going to do in blue, and I'm just going to kind of call this the left side. 
So when I trace over this, okay, you can see that the height is three and the, the, the length, or sorry, this would be the length and the width, the length is four. So that's a four. So I know that what I'm doing is when this blue piece flops out to the side, it is three times four. And this side is four and this side is three. So this, I'm just gonna put an S for the side and I forgot to put, this is my, I'm gonna use a capital B for this triangular base and a capital B for that triangular base. And then the last side that I have to draw, I'm going to draw in orange. And on this picture, it kind of looks like the top or the right hand side. So if I outline this in orange, hopefully it's easy for you to see that this would be the length and this would be the width. So I'm drawing the, I'm picturing this side flopping out to the side and I've got four and I've got a dimension of five and I'm just gonna put an S for the side. So now I have all of my, um, my net pieces drawn. And then what I wanna do is um, I already have the four times four and inside this five, I'm in, sorry, in, in this side, I have four times five. Over here on the left side, my dimensions are three times four. And then for the two triangle bases, here's the math that I need to do. I do, what are my dimensions? Three times four divided by two. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the rest of my graphic organizer. Three times four is 12 divided by two. 12 divided by two equals six. So each of these is six square yards or six yards square. And then the blue left side was three times four. So I get 12 yards squared. And the right side is four times five, which is 20 yards squared. And when you add all of that up, you should get 60 yards squared. Okay, I hope that one went well. And this is the second and last OYO, and that's all you have to do before you can start the homework. So again, pause my video, try to draw the net on your own, and um, good luck. All right, so for this one, I am gonna start by identifying this one. It looks a little tricky because I see a lot of numbers. But I noticed that this, okay, so I'm gonna erase this first. And I'm going to point out that this front triangle the six meters is the height, right? So when I go back and I draw in, I'm trying to, I start with the bottom, right? And identify the dimensions of the bottom. Oh, okay, so now that I've drawn it, I see I can ignore the six, even though it's kind of weird in the middle of my rectangle. This is my length and this is my width. So the bottom that I start with is 16 times nine. I realize I didn't give you guys much space for this, so hopefully you can fit it in. Okay, so I'm gonna abbreviate this bottom and it's 16 times nine. So this is the side that's 16 and there's the side that's nine. And now I'm gonna go ahead and erase this from here. And I think what I'm gonna do next are the two triangle faces. So I am going to color these in green. All right, so here's the triangle that I see. And I can see that it's a base of 16 and a height of six. And so I picture again, the triangle just flopping out like this, right? It's just gonna lay like that. And then the back triangle is gonna look something like this. And the 16 is the length. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll just put a little six here with my right angle to show that I'm gonna be multiplying the 16 times the six. So let's do my triangle bases are going to be 16 times six divided by two. So that's the math that I'm gonna do when I get to calculating the area. Okay, and then I go back and I'm gonna erase the green. Now I'm gonna do the blue left side. This one's kind of hard to see. So, you know, maybe a little bit tricky. So if I pick blue, okay. So now I can see that this is the top of the shape and it's really, I don't really, I can't really see too much of what's going on, but I'm trying to picture what's happening on the left-hand side here. 
and I can see that the side is 10 and then this side matches over here nine meters. So even though it's hard to see, you can kind of draw a little sliver of the rectangle and you can see that it's 10 by nine. And so I already have the side here that's nine, right? So now I need to draw this out around 10. So it's a little bit bigger than the nine. And this distance is 10. So inside my side, I have 10 times nine and I'm gonna put an S for side. And then I need to draw the other side. Ooh, which turns out the other side is the same. So in this one, because um, it looks like this is 10 and this is 10, which I don't know if you know the name of that triangle, it's an isosceles triangle. And so that means this rectangle has the same dimensions, but I'm going to highlight it. Oops, not in blue. I meant to use orange for this side. Okay, this side, it is also 10 times 9. So there's my length, there's my width. And I draw another rectangle out here, and this side is 10, and this is 9. So again, I have 10 times 9. This is my second side. So I think I have all of the dimensions that I need. Okay, so if I start here with the triangle bases, I need to do 16 times 6 divided by 2, which is... 48, right here using a calculator, 48 meters squared. And they're two identical triangles, so they're the same. And now I'm going to calculate the area of the bottom, which is 16 times 9, which is 144 square meters. And the blue side is 10 times 9, that one's pretty easy, 90 meters squared. And the right side, which is orange, is the same as the left. So it's also 90 meters squared. And if you add up all those numbers together, you should get 420 square meters or meters squared. So that's the lesson on finding surface area of triangular prisms. Good luck with the homework.